let's see, this week we're going to um, do trade integrals today and then, oh, tomorrow and Thursday, no, tomorrow and Wednesday, I suppose we're going to do trig substitution. We'll have, as I say, the test will give you some in class stuff to do um, Thursday, and we'll also give you a take home thing to get back to me on Monday. And I let's see. I will pick up where we uh, ended off in the class last week, which was looking at integrals of sines and cosines. And I am going to teach you to take this integral. And then, I mean, taking this integral in, is a trick, and this trick will generalize and let us take um, a lot of integrals. The sine cubed of x. So yesterday we were looking at things like the sine cubed of x, times the cosine of x dx. And I mean, I say yesterday, obviously last Thursday. And we were able to approach those using u substitution. We let u be the sine of x, the u then would be the cosine of x dx. This would then be the integral of u cubed du or one fourth u to the fourth and then, well, I'm out of space but that sign can go in for you. So we did stuff like that last Thursday. It clearly doesn't work here. I mean, maybe it's clear. The issue is that because we don't have any cosines, We can't get that to du. So u substitution, which works last Thursday, doesn't work here. But the stuff we did, come on, Zoom, the stuff we did last Thursday is going to lead us in the right direction. So say we have this idea. Um, last Thursday, we used U substitution. Let's try that again. It doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Well, there aren't any cosines. If we had sines and cosines, we could um, do something with this, perhaps. So let's ask the question. Can we rewrite the sine cube of X to include sines? and both sides. 
Well, to do that, we need some kind of relationship between sines and cosines, and we do have that relationship. I said at the end of Thursday that you should remind yourself of this if, if it's not in your long-term memory. that the sine squared of x plus the cosine squared of x equals one. So there's at least a relationship. <laughs> Sorry, there's at least a relationship between the sines and the cosines. But this identity, which we recall is called the Pythagorean identity. Uh, everyone can understand me, right? This thing isn't like, okay. Um, the Pythagorean identity relates the sine squared and the cosine squared. So we could write the sine squared of x equals one minus the cosine squared of x. But what's this sine squared of x? We don't have a sine squared of x we have a sine cubed of x. And I'm going to just show you the trick here. And then I'm going to talk after we finish this example about when we can use it. But certainly the cube is a square times the first hour. I mean, the sine cubed is just the sine times the sine times the sine. So it's the sine squared times the sine. And we're going to use this trick of rewriting that power together with the Pythagorean identity to solve or to find this integral. So we've got the sine cubed of x, which we've chosen to rewrite as the sine squared times the sine and the sine squared is one minus the cosine squared of x. So we can write this down. And at this point, we can perform a U substitution. We can let U be not the sign of X. But we can let u be the cosine of x. du is the negative sine x dx. And we can proceed from there. So, we don't have a negative sign, but I mean, we can put 
a negative in, we'll also put a second negative in so that we're not changing the integral up. So this negative sign can stay put. One minus the cosine squared becomes one minus u squared. The negative sign of x dx becomes du. And we have managed by sort of by trickery to, to rewrite this in terms of u. We've managed to do a u substitution. Negative u plus one third u cubed plus c is negative the cosine of x plus one third the cosine cubed of x plus Voila. Now, if this were just a trick that let us deal with the sine cubed and nothing else, it would be of pretty limited interest. We could hardly have an entire section of the textbook dedicated to it. But this trick of using the Pythagorean identity to rewrite a trig function, then use u substitution is actually pretty powerful. This trick or some variation of this trick lets us integrate Powers of the side times powers of the cosine. But, but it does have a One of these powers to use the trick that we're going to present today needs to be odd. We need an odd power. And to see where that requirement comes from, let's just look at a second example. Let's say this example might end up being pretty, pretty messy, but we'll be able to do it. Maybe the sine to the fifth of x times the cosine to the fourth of x. Yes. Sorry, I was feeling much better until I stepped into this building and now the sheet is uh, not great for me. Um, so we have, we have an odd power. We have the sign to the fifth. And why do we care about that? Why do we want an odd power? Well, here, 
we also had the sign to an odd power, right? The sign should. And the U substitution we ended up doing was U equals the cosine of X. So that's probably what we're going to end up doing here as well. We're probably going to end up letting U be the cosine of X and du then will be the negative sine of x dx. So we're going to need a sign just by itself. We're going to need a sign by itself if this is the U substitution, we're going to end up doing. So that's right. I mean, the sign to the fifth is the sign to the fourth times the sign of X. And then we've got that cosine. So if this is the U substitution we end up doing, that's, that's the sine of X, that's the DX. This is going to turn into DU. Um, this cosine to the fourth, that will just be U to the fourth. That's no problem at all. What about the sign to the fourth though? Well, here's where we're going to use the Pythagorean identity once again. Let me. And using the Pythagorean identity is going to involve a bit of a trick. Um, because the Pythagorean identity relates the sine squared and the cosine squared. And we don't have the sine squared. We have the sine to the fourth. Well, any even power, like if you have, I don't know, an 18th power, can be written as a square raised to another power. Like the 18th power is the square to the ninth power, the 14th power is the square to the seventh power. The fourth power is the square to the second power. This being the one that's actually relevant for the problem at hand. So we can rewrite the sign to the fourth as the sine squared of x squared. And let's see what that does for us. I mean, we can do a bunch of things, but Hopefully doing this in particular is going to help us with the integral. So we've got the sine squared of x squared, and we've got the sine of x, and we've got 
the cosine to the fourth of x. And now the sine squared of x, just like we rewrote it in this problem, it's one minus the cosine squared. And this is going to this. I mean, it, it's funny. I mean, you look at this and it seems like it's just getting worse and worse, probably. I mean, this hardly looks like it's simpler than what we started with. But actually, instead of worse and worse, this has been getting, for our purposes, better and better. Because at this point, we can let u be the cosine of x and our u substitution will pass through without trouble. Um, again, we, we're missing a negative sign. Again, though, missing negative signs isn't something we're unused to. And almost everything turns to you. One minus the cosine squared becomes one minus the u squared. We've got that square. The cosine to the fourth of x is u to the fourth. And then the negative sine x dx turns into du. So we have successfully gone from x's to use and um and what's more this is an integral we can take it's an integral that's going to be kind of tedious to take just algebraically but i mean it's a polynomial we know how to integrate polynomials the only thing that makes this tedious is that we know how to integrate polynomials in standard form. So we've got to do a little out, it's not even algebra, I guess, a little free algebra. We've got to foil this out. The one minus two u squared plus u to the fourth times u to the fourth. I, let's see, I'm just foiling this. One times one is one. One times negative u squared is negative u squared. We get that twice, inner and outer of the foil. And then u squared times u squared is u to the fourth. And copy that over. One minus two u squared plus u to the fourth. Times u to the fourth is negative u to the fourth minus two u to the six plus u to the eight.
equals negative one fifth u to the fifth minus two sevenths u to the seventh plus one ninth u to the ninth plus a constant of integration. And then we stick u back in. What was u anyway? U was the cosine of x. So we end up with this kind of polynomial looking thing, except that instead of a variable being raised to powers, it's the cosine of x being raised to powers. And as long as one of your powers is odd, this process works. I won't say it works without a hitch. And I mean, it can get quite ugly if your powers are large. I mean, even here, we had one minus u squared. We had to do some foiling and some algebra, but but let me outline the method. You've got an odd power. So you've got maybe the sine of x to an odd power times the cosine of x raised to some power. You take the sine or you take the odd power. In this particular case, the sine is raised to the odd power and you will rewrite it and you rewrite it by pulling out a single ring function. Let me number these. Then this even power you rewrite every even power can be written as a square raised to some power. And we've got the trig function that we pulled out and we've got the other trig function. Next, it's always going to be the same trick. We'll have the trig function square. What step are we on? I call it that three. Four, use the Pythagorean identity. So when we use the Pythagorean identity here, these sine squares become a cosine. And we've got this trig function, this sign that we pulled out. And then we've got 
this other trig function that we've basically been ignoring. And at this point, we perform a U substitution. And that to me is the is the basic process of this section. I mean, if you look, if you look at the textbook, there's a lot of kind of miscellaneous examples. Like here's some weird thing involving square roots of trade functions. But um, to me, this is this is kind of the most important trick of this section and the only one that I really want to dwell upon. Now, when I was writing this down, I kind of arbitrarily that the sign be raised to an odd power, but If the cosine were being raised to an odd power, that's fine too. Um, instead of pulling out a sine, we'd pull out a cosine. Instead of having the sine squared to a power, we'd have the cosine squared to a power. Okay. Then instead of one minus the cosine squared, we'd have one minus the sine squared. And our last step would still be a U substitution. We'd, <laughs> we'd be letting U be the sine of X instead of letting U be the cosine of x, but other than that, everything goes through the same. So, in practice, this only works for relatively small powers, it has to be said. I mean, what if, what if we had the cosine to the 17th of X times the sine squared of X dx? Hypothetically, we can deal with this. That 17 is an even power, so we have is an odd power. So we have a trick that is supposed to allow us to take this integral. Um, in practice, not really. I mean, what happens when we try to Picked this integral with the trick that we just learned. The cosine to the 17th is an odd power, so we'll pull a cosine out. It works fine. The cosine 
to the 16th is now the cosine squared to the eighth. So good so far. This cosine squared is one minus the sine squared. So yeah, everything is everything's working out great. And now we perform our U substitution. And our U substitution works. I mean, U is the sine of X. DU is the cosine of X DX. So we get one minus U squared for the eighth times the sine squared, so times u squared du. And then we look at that. And this is a polynomial. So Theoretically, we know how to take this integral, but we only can take this integral if the polynomial is in its standard form. So to take this integral, we need to rewrite this polynomial. And to do that, well, one minus u squared times one minus u squared eight times. And we contemplate doing that by hand. And then we probably just go to a computer and have it do this problem for us. So, because the bigger, the bigger the odd power, you know, the bigger this power ends up being, and the more work it is to try to actually foil that out and get to the polynomial. I would say, I mean, it works great for third powers, fifth powers, okay, seventh powers, kind of pushing it. But if we have to, by like the ninth power, if I saw um, a ninth power, the sine to the ninth times the cosine squared, I probably wouldn't do that by. I'd probably just use a machine of some sort, but this does work fine with low powers. But what's this risk? Ah, uh, sorry, I've been sort of in a talking in a haze. Uh, does anybody have any questions about what we've done so far? So what I said this works if we have odd powers. Let's just discuss. Why do we need an odd power? Why can't this same trick work 
if we have something like this. Well, going back to this trick, you see that we have this odd power. And then when we board a cosine out, so when we board this cosine out, this turned into an even power. And the reason that's important is that only an even power can be written like this. The cosine squared to any power is even. So if we tried to perform this same trick here, maybe, maybe we pull a sign out. Well, we now can't perform the next step because, because this sine cubed is odd, we can't rewrite it as the sine squared raised to a power. So we cannot use the Pythagorean identity and we cannot and ultimately perform our U substitution. Now there is, <laughs> there is a trick that works with even powers. I'm kind of back on and forth. Um, I might show it to you. I might show it to you tomorrow. Um, but it's definitely it's definitely a lot more awkward than the trick we presented today, and it really breaks down if you've got large even powers. I mean, even more than this trick does. Let's see. Um, if you have multiple odd powers, then you just get to make a choice. I mean, if you have the sign to the fifth of X, times the cosine cubed x dx, then you're going to either pull out a sine. You can write this as the sine fourth times the sine, and then proceed. Or you're going to pull out the cosine, write this as the cosine squared of x times the cosine and proceed. Um, we'll do some more examples of this tomorrow. I think that I am on the mend. I need to Good though, I think I need to end fast here and maybe run some cold water over my uh, forehead. So I'll see you tomorrow.